Coach Tofa. What's going on, everybody? Coach Topher here. Hey, guys, back with another baseball story time. Now, in the last episode of this, I told you guys about me wink chucking the ball over third baseman's head and hitting that dude square in the neck and losing the game. Well, this time it's going to be a little bit more fun. I want to tell you guys about my father. Now, my father busted his ass, blue collar job, did whatever it took, missed like three days of work in 30 years. I mean, the man is just a badass. And those three days, two of those were to take care of my mom, brother, and I when we were all sick. So my dad is just a great guy. And I know a lot of you guys say, oh, my parents are the best. And, you know, maybe I'm biased because he's my father. But the man is just super cool. He's awesome. Watch his family guy, watches all the same movies and TV shows. He's just, he's such a wonderful human being. You know, he was really busy. He worked his crazy schedule and did whatever he had to do to provide for a good living for my family. And he he did that. But he always took time to do something special. He always took time to make sure that we knew that, you know, we were important to him and, and to build those memories that, you know, I hold on to very, very dearly. One of the things that my dad would always do, it's like, you know, hey, school is very important, but he would always take us off a couple of days a year to go do something fun, a little life experience. Every year, he would take us up to Wrigley Field, at least once. He would pull us out of school for one day every year and take us up to Wrigley Field to go watch the Chicago Cubs play. And it was just awesome. We'd bring our mitts, and our favorite part about going up there to Wrigley Field, and guys, if you've never been to Wrigley Field, it really is. I don't want to say a religious experience, but when you walk into that field, Especially as a little kid, you know, with your dad, and, you know, he just got your new Cubs hat and a Cubs shirt, and you got your mitt on, and you walk through those turnstiles, and you start walking through that concourse, and you catch that, you hear the organ in the background, you catch that first glimpse of light peeking into that concourse, and you can kind of see the stands, and you catch your first glimpse of the grass. And there is just this very, very amazing feeling that, that comes over me, even just thinking about it. It's just a wonderful place with a lot of history, but you know, for me it was just about my dad and my brother and how much I love my cubbies. And our favorite part was batting practice. And my dad knew if we missed batting practice, I would be irate. I actually, when I was a little kid, used to have nightmares about missing batting practice. I would almost rather go to batting practice than the game because I'm a hustler. You know, I got more autographs, more foul balls. I got to sit in the front seat with the president of the Cubs, like right there in the front row next to the super sexy ball girl. And she got me, I got to choose what foul ball I wanted from what player. And, you know, it was always a lot of fun. There was always opportunities to run around and and try and get a souvenir. And my dad would just let me roam free and I'd always get shit and then bring it back to him and drop it off. You know, he always keep a close eye on me. But one day my dad tells a little white lie. He says, hey guys, listen, uh, you guys have dentist appointments today and we actually need to take a buddy of mine up to the airport up in Chicago and there won't be anybody home to watch you when you get off of school. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and you guys are gonna run up to Chicago with me. Well, that was cool. I'm getting out of school for the day. So I was pretty happy about that. But especially younger me, <laughs> always wanted more, always wanted more. And I had a Cubs schedule in my book bag. I knew that the Cubs were playing at home. It was a day game that we'd be right up around Chicago and could still make batting practice by the time we dropped my dad's buddy off at the airport. Well, when I want something, I go after it and I am relentless about it. It was about a two, two and a half hour drive to Chicago. Well, the half an hour previous before we left and (laughs) all the way up there, I pestered the shit out of my father. Dad, come on, can we go go to the Cubs game? Come on, it's not too far away from the airport. It's up there, come on, we can just go there and it'll be awesome and, and we can just go. Listen, Chris, we don't have time. We have to go up there, drop him off and get back. I just would not, would not let up. The poor man was taking me to the Cubs game. He was taking my brother and I to the Cubs game, but he wanted it to be a surprise. But me, being me, pestered the shit out of him until finally he whips around the car and he was like, (laughs) I'm going to paraphrase this, but for the love of God, shut up and look in the camera bag. Well, I go back, open the camera bag up, 
and there is my Cubs hat and my mitt. I immediately knew we were going to that Cubs game, and I always feel bad about ruining that surprise for my dad. <laughs> but you know what? I think if you asked him, he'd look back on that and say that that's who I am and that's my personality. I just would not let it go. All the man was trying to do is surprise us by taking us up there for that game. But boy, what a day. We went up there, and one of my favorite players was coming back off of injury reserve, and they were taking batting practice, and they broke their bat. They're walking back, and their porter's right by them. There's all these kids and all these girls just screaming, Hey, can I get your autograph? Can I get your autograph? And I'm just like, yes, Sir, could I please have your autograph? And you're my favorite player. And he looks at me and goes, I don't have time, kid. And he takes his bat, and with all those people standing there, hands it to me. I don't even know how to describe it. It was just so awesome to have your favorite player hand you a broken bat. And I just remember everyone around there being so jealous. And I can still remember thinking, wow, that was really rude of him to say he doesn't have time, kid. And I can still see it in slow motion, him handing me that broken bat. And I held on to that thing and I was so happy. So it's something that I still have and I actually gave to my father a couple years ago. And it's just something special that we share. And you know, that's that's what baseball is about for me. You know, I mean, and, and sport in general is, is about that. It's something that, you know, families can share, you know, fathers and sons can share those things together. And it's just something of a really, really special memory. So if you guys ever get a chance to go to Wrigley Field, um, definitely, definitely, definitely go. It's, you know, you have all these modern ballparks and everything, but there is nothing quite like Wrigley Field. So before I end this, I do want to say a special thanks to my dad. He pushed me. He pushed me to be better than I ever would have been if it weren't for him. Uh, he pushed me to hit more balls, to take more bat- more fielding practice, to work harder than anyone else. And that's the standard that my father set. You do it right the first time. That's just the way it is. You outwork the other guy and you're going to win out. You know, it's not always the case, but he instilled those values in me. So thanks a lot, Pop. I really appreciate it. And hope you guys enjoyed this baseball gameplay. Like I said, no, it's not the Modern Warfare 3 stuff. But baseball was a big part of my life. And a lot of my stories, you know, revolve around that. So I think it's a good way to get it out there. So anyway, guys, thanks a lot for listening. Thanks a lot for watching. And I really appreciate everything, guys. Take care. Cap the dude will dig in now. A single and a fly out for him in two trips thus far. First pitch on the way. Now he goes with the slider that time and it's driven to deep right field. And gone! A home run! A solo shot here to straightaway right field. His third home run of this series as they push the lead to four to two. And this is what you expect when you make it to the postseason. I mean, you expect the guys that have carried you all year to keep on producing and Sure enough, he comes through again and delivers a no-doubter here. One more series to get through, but the way they played in this NLCS, you can bet they'll put up quite a fight in the World Series that begins in a few days. You might ever tell you look like a penis with a little hat on? Crack and skulls, bitch!